My name's Amata and this is Red Gamer Tech video I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours as per usual. No spice this time with anything content related, we're going to keep it pure and simple tech. Well, maybe not simple, but regardless, what I have for you today. Well, I have a couple of Nvidia pieces to kick things off as they have announced their Q4 and fiscal 2018 financial results and they have also made a statement regarding the supply and demand issue with graphics cards. Then we're going to move on to some AMD pieces as we have a leak for the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G benchmark. And on speaking of Raven Ridge, ASUS have announced support for AMD Ryzen desktop processors with Radeon Vega. Moving swiftly on from that, we're going to address something very quickly from Microsoft regarding Office 2019. And then finishing up with a bit of mobile tech, we have the latest Xiaomi Mi 7 screenshots showing some of the specifications. And finally, we have Qualcomm rebuffing a rather, shall we say, expensive offer from Broadcom. So it seems that Qualcomm are not going to make it easy for Broadcom to acquire them. However, as I said, let's begin things with NVIDIA. As I said, we're going to kick things off with their financials as they have reported for, again, Q4 and fiscal 2018, and they reported record revenue for the fourth quarter, which of course ended January 28, 2018. And we saw some pretty impressive increases, unsurprising this is NVIDIA we're talking about, and we have $2.91 billion, which is an impressive increase of 34% from last year. And just to kind of give us a bit of perspective, last year they made $2.17 billion and also up 10% from, from $2.64 billion in the previous quarter. So not only was it up versus last year, it was up versus the previous quarter to this as well. We also saw increases in gap earnings per diluted share for the quarter, and they were up $1.78, which is an increase of 80% from $0.99 cents a year ago, and up 34% from $1.33 in the previous quarter. However, for the entire fiscal year, even that sort of increases that are pretty damn impressive. A record 9.71 billion, which is up 41% from the 6.91 billion reported last year. Gap earnings per diluted share were up four. Sorry, they were up, they were recorded at four dollars eighty two. They went up four dollars eighty two. Excuse me. This is actually an increase of 88% from two dollars fifty seven a year earlier. So, not exactly chump change. I'm sure you will agree. Now we do have a bit of a statement here from the. Founder and of course CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, who said, quote, We achieved another record quarter, capping an excellent year. In a powerful sign of our progress, attendees at NVIDIA's GPU technology conferences reached 22,000, up tenfold in five years, as software developers working in AI, self-driving cars, and a broad range of other fields continue to discover the acceleration and money-saving benefits of our GPU computing platform. Industries around the world are racing to incorporate AI. Virtually every internet and cloud service provider has embraced our Volta GPUs. Hundreds of transportation companies are using our NVIDIA Drive platform. From manufacturing and healthcare to smart cities, innovators are using our platform to invent the future. And speaking of the future, they're expecting to make $2.9 billion for the first quarter of fiscal year 2019. So this is but, you know... A, well, not a starting point exactly, but they're just hoping to continue increasing from there. And to be honest, given the focus that they've had on AI and self-driving cars and all that sort of thing that we've seen in the last few conferences, and of course the interest in that from tech whizzes and obviously general public, I'm, I'm not really surprised to see that you know the increase is there. Obviously the increase in gaming as well, but NVIDIA are much, much more than that. And we are seeing a huge increase in these very expensive sectors as well. Now, speaking of graphics cards, they have addressed the issue which has been a bit of a thorny one for quite some time now which of course is supply and demand and the fact that cryptocurrency miners are driving prices up. Now I have a few statements from various people from NVIDIA regarding this. The first is Colette Cress who is the Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer and she said quote strong demand in the cryptocurrency market exceeded our expectations. And they also said that cryptocurrency accounted for a higher percentage of revenue than the previous quarter, although the, dif the increase is difficult to quantify. However, she did stress that they aren't counting on this business. You know, NVIDIA are, of course, extremely aware of how volatile the particular market is. You know, the bubble could burst, or, is it, or it could not. We just don't know. It obviously is wildly varying. And Colette continued, quote, Our main focus remains on our core market as cryptocurrency will likely remain volatile. 
And we also have a couple of statements from Jensen Huang himself, and he is the one who basically said that they're working hard to try and get more GPUs out there for gamers and obviously to kind of ease the pressure on the graphics cards that are out there on the market and the insane price increases that we have seen. And he did say, quote, we're working really hard to get GPUs out into the marketplace for gamers and we're doing everything we can to advise e-tailers and system builders to serve the gamers. We're doing everything we can, but I think the most important thing is we got we, we just got to catch up with supply. We're just constrained. So obviously, you know, they can't produce an infinite amount of graphics cards, obviously, because they don't have an infinite amount of resources, but they are basically saying, hey, we're doing our best. We'll try and get as many GPUs out there as we can, because obviously the issue is there's a huge amount of demand, not enough supply, so the graphics cards that are out there are, you know, 1.5, two times two times the price, you know, depending on which one you're buying, to you want to uh, the price increase and how good it is for mining. So it's hard to, you know, exactly pin down the price increase, but it is crazy to buy a graphics card right now. I mean, I was thinking of upgrading um, sometime soon, but to be honest, it's going to wait a long time, I think. Probably till mid end of this year, because I'm going to I'm gonna have to make do, because I'm not paying, like, you know, two times the price or whatever because mining is a thing like people want to mine that's their choice but i it's also my choice not to buy an expensive graphics card just because the uh, demand is outrunning the supply by quite a significant margin and i think many people feel the same way so that's definitely gonna have an impact overall i think on gaming as in general but obviously it's hard again as colette herself said it's hard to quantify exactly what that impact is going to be but it undoubtedly is having one Anyway, let's move on from speculation to our AMD segment and let's begin things with the benchmarks leaking for the Ryzen 5 2400G. Now this is actually prior to NDAs actually expiring, but we do have, thanks to this, a little bit of a peek at the performance of the Ryzen 5 2400G, as I already said. And we have a 4-core 8 thread, as we already know, running at 3.9 GHz boost and 8 megabytes of L3 cache, of course this is boasting the Vega 11 graphics chip with a 1250 MHz clock speed. Before we go to the unofficial leaks, I just want to give a bit of a refresher on the screen as to the official benchmarks that we saw already, which obviously show you the Ryzen 5 versus the other Ryzen 5 versus the two Ryzen 3s, kind of giving you the difference not only between the two Ryzen 5 SKUs, but obviously the two Ryzen 3s as well, as well as the difference in performance between Ryzen 5 versus Ryzen 3. However, let's move swiftly on to the leaked benches, shall we? So with ice on 1.2, we see a total score of 1,000, sorry, 1,000, 100,000 into 807, with the physics score, which obviously measures CPU performance at 52,549, and a graphics score of 141,464. And we see continually impressive results across Firestrike 1.1, which of course has a score of 5,342, and we also have an impressive 10,762 for physics. And of course, we finally have Time Spy, which basically shows that we have three times the results of a typical notebook, but obviously not exactly going to be running The Witcher 3 at 4K anytime soon, but it is impressive results of what is ostensibly a mobile APU. Now, as with any unofficial benchmarks or unconfirmed benchmarks for a thing that isn't out yet, do take these with a pinch of salt, especially as we can't confirm things like clock speed, memory config, and that sort of stuff. However, it does kind of line up with what we already know about the Ryzen 5 and all that good stuff. So, you know, it's not like completely outside the realm of possibility that this is real. I'd say it's fairly likely that it is real. I'm just saying, do keep in mind that there is the potential for this to just be a fairly convincing fake. Obviously as with any new purchase, obviously wait for reviews to come in. One a few if you know a few benchmarks are great, but we need obviously a whole suite of benchmarks to get a really complete picture of like the overall performance and that sort of thing. So anyway, speaking of Raven Ridge, Asus have announced today that their complete line of AM4 socket based motherboards will now offer support for the Raven Ridge APU, so obviously Ryzen desktop with Radeon Vega graphics, and it's going to be via a BIOS update, unsurprisingly. So obviously you can find the BIOS update on the usual places, and there's also going to be a updated graphics driver as well, which is going to be available from the ASUS support website. 
there's going to be a link in the description below to these BIOS updates if you are perhaps a ASUS motherboard user. So with that out of the way, let's move on to our mini segment regarding Microsoft Office. Now unsurprisingly, Microsoft is fairly aggressive in trying to get owners of Windows 7 and 8.1 who have yet to upgrade to, you know, move over to Windows 10 because now they have officially announced that Microsoft Office 2019 will only work with Windows 10 and the next LTSC release of Windows Server. And interestingly enough, they're also cutting the amount of support that it's going to get as well. You may recall if perhaps you've been a long-time user of Microsoft Office that they get 10 years of support. However, with Office 2019, we're going to see that life cycle halved to five years of mainstream support and two years of extended support. So that's quite a significant downgrade in the amount of support it's receiving. But obviously, you can still use the old versions of Microsoft Office. You know, you don't have to upgrade to... Microsoft Office 2019, but if you do want to use that, it is going to be Windows 10 only for that. Not exactly surprising to see them make this move. Obviously, Microsoft Office is an extremely useful application that is used for you know, a ton of things by you know companies and you know just casual users alike. So this is a pretty significant push towards Windows 10, but obviously I don't think it's going to make people upgrade if they don't want to because they can still continue to use the old version. But it is still a significant thing of like, hey. You have to use Windows 10 if you want Microsoft Office 2019. We're going to see, like, obviously, a bunch of notebooks that say, hey, we come with Microsoft Office 2019. And obviously, that means, hey, we also come with Windows 10, but that's not really all that surprising in it of itself. So, just an interesting thing to see which way Microsoft is pushing. So, let's move on to our final two segments. And the first one is, of course, the Xiaomi Mi 7. So, as I mentioned, these are some leaks for the specs of the Xiaomi Mi 7. As with any leak, do obviously take it with a pinch of salt, you know the drill. What's interesting, however, is that this screenshot pretty much backs up some previous leaks that we have seen for this particular device. So, we see that it is running on MIUI 9, and that kind of lines up with it being a Snapdragon 845. However, we also get details on side of the RAM and the clock speed and that sort of thing. We've got 8GB of RAM and 2.79GHz, as well as 128GB of storage space. However, unfortunately, on this particular screenshot, we do not see any display information. However, on the previous leaks, we did see a 2160 by 1080 display. So things seem to be a bit up in the air because some things are different from the screenshots we've seen previously. And obviously some things are kind of lining up with them. So... Do keep in mind that things do seem to be kind of fluctuating with the rumours surrounding this. You know, the first rumour might be right, this one might be right, they both might be wrong. We just don't know. But I still thought it was interesting to touch on as we kind of see where things are going and kind of lines up with our final topic regarding Qualcomm as well. So, let's finish things up with them, shall we? Now, Broadcom have not given up on their efforts to acquire Qualcomm and they have made a very significant offer of 121 billion dollars so you know surprisingly given the huge amount of money Qualcomm have actually rejected the offer unanimously and according to details on their website Qualcomm is basically saying that they don't think this offer is good enough they say it undervalues the company they also saying there's a bit of a risk involved if the acquisition fails because of the disapproval of regulators and Qualcomm has basically said hey you know, we're not saying no to you, we're just saying no to this offer, so, you know, feel free to come up with a better deal. However, this is obviously the second time that Broadcom have tried to acquire them, and this is a $82 per share offer. However, back in November, we saw a $70 per share offer, so they've increased it a fair chunk, but obviously, Qualcomm were like, that's great, but it's not good enough, bro, try again. Obviously, the full response from Qualcomm is a, a fair bit longer than that, and obviously a, a bit more, shall we say, in-depth than that. But it basically comes down to like, hey, yeah, we also, you know, we appreciate the offer, but, you know, this undervalues the company, and we have various concerns, such as, for example, you know, there's no breakup fee or anything like that mentioned, and there was no valuation for NXP, which obviously Qualcomm is acquiring and they are a semi semiconductor company excuse me perhaps if you are unaware so they're like hey what about that so there's various things that broadcom have not addressed outside of them quote unquote undervaluing the company in qualcomm's opinion so 
it's probably going to be going on a while because Qualcomm is a huge company and they've been doing insanely well. So they're not going to accept anything they're not happy with. They they want to make sure that they think they're getting what they think they're worth and also that all the you know I's and dotted and T's are crossed and that sort of thing. So if Broadcom acquire them, that would obviously be huge. But for the moment, the status quo will remain. So with all that said, that has been done for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.